from the South Point studio. There. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oreo. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program for this Thursday. It's almost Friday, but it's uh, your almost Friday Thursday race day show. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at our studio station, the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on the Las Vegas Boulevard Strip. We welcome you to the show, and of course, uh, we uh, welcome everybody listening on all those different other platforms that we have, like our local radio stations here that we simulcast to, and then, of course, our anchor station, Sports Talk, 1400 AM, KSHP, 1400 AM, and on 107.1 FM, and then all our websites, racedaylasvegas.com, .vegas .world Global, and then you've got your iPhones, your Androids, with not only your uh, KSHP app that you can hear us on uh, your devices, but if you go to your YouTube app on there, you can see us streaming on the South Point Studios Network, as you do right now, here on uh, YouTube, uh, you can eat it, have it either way on your uh, your devices, your iPhones or your Androids, and of course, anywhere you get your podcasting as well. We welcome you to the show, however, wherever, whenever you get us. Welcome to the Race Day Show. Well, we're gearing it up for a kind of a really neat weekend. Not only do we have the final big point getters for the Kentucky Derby leaderboard, but we also have uh, the uh, final uh, uh, races for the Phillies for the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. 
But we also have a, something called the Final Four in the NCAA uh, Basketball Championship. And, of course, on Monday, when it's all said and done on Saturday, the two teams that survived the entire March Madness will go for the championship on Monday evening. So we got a lot to cover, that's for sure. As far as the, the South Point Network is concerned, we have two great sports shows on this, uh, this uh, streaming network. And, of course, that is uh, Sports by the Book. And, of course, uh, Frank Natero's uh, uh, Punchlines as well. So Nick Natero, I should say, Punchlines as well. Great shows all. And uh, don't forget today being Thursday, after we're done talking about the power under the horse hide, you can get the power under the hood uh, as far as auto racing with Gone Racing with uh, Brendan Gone a little bit later on on the network as well. So we got a lot happening here at the South Point Studios streaming network. Check it out on YouTube, that's for sure, if you're not already here with us. All right, a couple of uh, things going on. Uh, Santa Anita uh, has a special makeup card today. They do, the, the schedule is not for Thursday, but of course, as you know, they canceled the weekend because of the uh, weather. So they may, uh, today is a makeup day, and it's a, it's a weekend type of makeup day uh, as far as the uh, racing uh, card is concerned. We have two graded stakes races uh, at Santa Anita that were supposed to be run on the weekend that are running today. So it's kind of a neat Thursday card at Santa Anita. And Santa Anita is winding up its uh, winter meet, its winter uh, kind of spring meet coming up. On Sunday will be uh, like the closing day for that meet. And then we won't get back to uh, Santa Anita for about a week. It'll return to racing on the 19th of April. So after Sunday... We'll have a week uh, respite uh, for uh, Santa Anita Racing before they kick in with uh, what would be normally, in the old days, the Hollywood Park meet. But now they're picking up those dates. So we're going to have a little bit of respite in between uh, as it was scheduled, not because of the weather, but it was scheduled. So we have a big, big weekend coming up at Santa Anita. On Sunday, they have all of these uh you know, all of these uh, races on Sunday at uh, Santa Anita, big uh, stakes card that'll feature 12 races overall. Uh, you got that uh, new uh, uh, pick three uh, for the uh, three stakes races, uh, the Kentucky Derby uh, stakes races, the, uh, of course, uh, the Wood Memorial, the Bluegrass, and the Santa Anita Derby, a special pick three of those three races as well. Uh, of course, the Coast to Coast pick five between uh, Gulfstream and Santa Anita this weekend. And there will be a mandatory payout on all of the uh, mandatory payout on all of the uh, uh, bets, including the uh, pick six if there's any left. But mandatory payouts on Sunday at Santa Anita. So we're wrapping it up there. Tomorrow starts Keeneland's uh, prestigious spring meet. A lot of stakes races front loaded at uh, Keeneland for their spring meet. We'll open tomorrow with three stakes races that include the Ashland, an important race for the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, that's for sure an important race for the uh, Kentucky Oaks uh, at uh, Keeneland tomorrow. And that, of course, so we'll, we'll, co we'll cover that with the Ashland uh, Stakes as well tomorrow. All right, a couple of things that are happening in racing. First off, now there's a lawsuit, okay? The owner of Muth, the winner of the Arkansas Derby, and one of the favorites, Maymun, for this coming weekend, Saturday's Santa Anita Derby, the owner... Amr Zidane has filed a lawsuit against Churchill Downs because of the band of Bob Baffert. He wants his horses to run in the Kentucky Derby under the training of Bob Baffert. And so he's taking them to court. They're going to hear that particular lawsuit and whether he has a case and whether they'll exempt him uh, from running in the Kentucky Derby or whether they'll give him a stay and he'll be able to run his horses in the Kentucky Derby. The lawsuit is against Churchill Downs. It's not by Bob Baffert. It's by the owner of the horses that are trained by Bob Baffert. So follow that bouncing ball. In any case, that hearing is going to be in Kentucky on Monday. If they allow him to run his horses in the Kentucky Derby, they'll be 26 days from the ruling until the actual Derby day. You know that can, uh, Churchill Downs may very well file some sort of goofy appeal, and we will never, we won't know until probably the entries for the Kentucky Derby if we'll be able to run or not. So this ongoing battle between Bob Baffert, his owners, and Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby continues. We'll wait and see about that. 
In the meantime, there's a rumor out there that uh, Churchill Downs had made an overture to buy Pimlico Racecourse. Of course, that's the home of the middle jewel of the Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes. Now, uh, you know, the way it's set up right now with Pimlico and the people who own it, the first, uh, first bet people, the Stronic Group, uh, they're going to turn over uh, Pimlico Racecourse to the state of Maryland. The state of Maryland, therefore, is going to um, get a bond going where they are going to remodel the, uh, the facility, Pimlico Racecourse, uh, and by July. And then they would operate the uh, racetrack, uh, the Pimlico Racetrack, uh, by January 1st. So that ongoing thing is going on. A lot of different uh, kind of sidebar things going on besides the regular horse racing. Uh, yesterday, uh, Jonathan Ardoon and both Rich Ang gave us a couple of horses at uh, Parks Racing. And I will be glad to tell you, you didn't lose any money at Parks Racing <laughs> because Parks Racing was canceled because of the awful weather there. So if you uh, bet those two races, you got refunds coming on your wages, that's for sure, on our handicappers yesterday. But we got our, we got our load of handicappers today. Jonathan Ardoon will be back with us. Uh, Rich Ang, of course, will be back in us a little bit more on the uh, final four coming up on Saturday. And he does have a pick, obviously, for today at Santa Anita, as well as John Lendo. Lendo will be uh, reporting to us uh, some of the uh, things that are going on in Southern California. I understand that the condition book for that uh, spring meet after Sunday, the little respite, and then we come back on the uh, 19th of April. The condition book for the horses entering in those races, they say the uh, purse values have been cut. Uh, and uh, that's uh, it's a little bit of a, a fallout between the California Horse Racing Board and the ongoing deficits in California racing. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. With John Lendo, he'll keep us going on those Southern California races, that's for sure. And, of course, Jerry Jackowitz will be with us with a selection of the Santa Anita and Aqueduct. So we got a lot to do. So at any further ado, let's go to our first break. We'll be right back, and uh, we'll start our racing menu for you today, which is a little bit larger than yesterday's four racetracks. We'll be back. Don't go. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Back on race day in Las Vegas. Got to tell you, it's uh, pretty nice out here today in Las Vegas. Uh, we're going to get up to uh, in the uh, 70s here. It's about uh, 56, 58 degrees right, out, right outside right now. So it's a little chilly still in the morning, but it's going to be nice throughout the weekend here. And, of course, as we look ahead to uh, the weekend as far as uh, the big major racing centers, of course, Kentucky, and you got New York, and you got Southern California. Uh, hopefully we'll get some good weather out of the East Coast, although that, uh, that mess is still there going through there today. Uh, Jonathan Ardoon is shoveling out snow up where he lives in the, the northern part of the state of New York, so we'll wait and see about that. Florida looks clear, and uh, for everything between the two coasts looks pretty clear, and we got some action going on in northern California that may be um, dicey for Santa Anita, but we'll wait because it's only Thursday. And so without any further ado, let's get started with the racing menu of racetracks available today in the race book, simulcast centers and racetracks around the country. First post times we broadcast on this show each and every day, of course, you know, is uh, that of the Pacific time zone. These will be the first post times that roll out in our race book here at South Point today and in all the Pacific time zone. Uh, if you're listening on the multitude of uh, streaming and delivery services, uh, certainly the platforms that we have, and you are anywhere else in another time zone around the world, just adjust to it, adjust to the Pacific time zone, 
so you don't miss anything like I miss mom and dad. First post times are going to be Pacific. Okay? All right, we begin with the Mahoning Valley Racecourse. Mahoning Valley Racecourse has a, a pick six jackpot carryover, and it's a goodie for that part of the country. Mahoning Valley Racecourse pick six jackpot carryover, 83558 bucks. First post time at Mahoning Valley for eight races today is at 955. 955 at Mahoning Valley today. Gulfstream Park. Gulfstream Park's uh, carryover in their rainbow pick six jackpot. I can get it there. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, Gulfstream Park's uh, carryover uh, is none because, as you know, they did a mandatory payoff on Sunday. So they'll start it anew today. Today is, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Palm uh, Palm Meadows uh, meet there. So Gulfstream Park has eight races. Their first post time is at 10-10, 10-10 today. Aqueduct, the big A in New York. First post time at Aqueduct is 10-20 today. It starts the spring meet. But they did have a carryover from closing day's winter meet on Sunday. That does carry over. It carries over to today. And uh, today, the uh, pick six carryover at Aqueduct uh, will be forthcoming. We'll wait and see about that. First post time is 10-20, 10-20 at Aqueduct for their eight race card on this opening of the uh, spring meet. Oaklawn Park is next. They have nine races. Oaklawn Park's first post time is set at uh, 10-30, 10-30 at Oaklawn. Sunland Park has nine races today, all thoroughbred races. Super High Five carryover there, $1,005. And the uh, Pick 5 carryover, regular Pick 5 carryover at Sunland is uh, $1,948. Nine races, first post time, eleven twenty-five. dollars Santa Anita, the makeup day today at Santa Anita. One o'clock, first post at Santa Anita. Now look at this. They have two graded stakes races today. The Grade 3 Wilshire. At a mile on the turf for Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up is the seventh race on the card. Ten go to the post before any scratches. A good, competitive, wide-open race. The Wilshire uh, favorite on the morning line is Stay and Scam with Mario Gutierrez at 3-1. to one. That's the seventh. And then the ninth and final race is the uh, Grade 3 American Stakes at a mile on the turf for four-year-olds and up. This is a field of 10-2. And uh, in this race, uh, the favorite at 5-2 to two is Gold Phoenix with Juan Hernandez aboard. First post time on the makeup day with two grade ones, uh, grade three stakes races, I should say. Two graded stakes races today at Santa Anita. First post time is at 1 o'clock. Turf Paradise has nine races. Two quarter horse trials will be the first two. And then you have seven thoroughbred races. The third race will be a stakes race for, at six furlongs for three-year-olds. First post time at Turf Paradise is at 125. They have a pick six jackpot carryover, 191,638 bucks. That's at uh, Turf Paradise today. First post time 125. And then uh, we get to Charlestown races. Charlestown has a first post time of 4 p.m. They have a pick six jackpot carryover, 4,681 dollars, and a first post time again 4 p.m. at Charlestown. And that's your racing menu for today. All I can say is that uh, pretty neat racing menu when you get uh, two grade uh, three stakes races and a racing card at Santa Anita. And, of course, when we start tomorrow with the injection of, uh, of uh, Keeneland there, it's going to be a, a great month of uh, racing in April, that's for sure. Let's bring in Jonathan Hardoon right now. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? I'm doing fine, my man. Aqueduct starts a uh, kind of like a new meet today, I guess, right? Yeah, well, the, I guess the winter meet ended on Sunday, so everything starts fresh today. And uh, the Florida people will start shipping back to Aqueduct. Turf racing will begin in two weeks, but not if you look out the window, because uh, we got slammed with snow here, and New York got slammed with plenty of rain. However, today it's cleared up. It's a nice day, but uh, the track certainly will be sloppy. It is cloudy, they say, and 41 degrees right now at Aqueduct, and the track will start off labeled muddy and the carryover from Sunday's winter meet into today's first day of the spring meet for the pick six, $42,323 and 26 cents to be exact. And that is the uh, carryover in the uh, pick six. And as you always remind us, uh, it's still a $1 bet, right? It is. And it's interesting because they used to always pay it out on the last day. I guess they changed the rules. They're going to now carry it over. Usually when the meet ends, everything goes out the door. 
as you like to say, but uh, <clears throat> they're carrying it over. So that's interesting. By the way, Ralph, as far as the Baffert lawsuit is concerned, yeah. I think the owner actually took a pretty good stand. I mean, he's claiming that he would have never bought horses and invested more money into the game if he thought the, the uh, suspension would continue. You know, he had a, a, a suspension. He served it out and he assumed it was over. I mean, the guy does make some sense with this lawsuit. Not, I think. Even, not even a question about that. Look, he, he said that he and he's a big purchaser, too, at the sales. He said the particular yeah. those particular two horses that he bought, Muth and uh, Maimon, who uh, is going to be one of the favorites in the San Anita Derby. Uh, he bought them uh, specifically to try to get them into the Kentucky Derby and win the Kentucky Derby. He had a purpose for buying these horses, and he said, uh, and they're preventing him from doing that. He wouldn't have bought the horses and spent over a million dollars for both of these horses if it wasn't the case. That's what I'm saying. I mean, his lawsuit really, I mean, there is some, some common sense behind it. The problem is that Churchill has the right to deny anybody souls. It's a privately owned company, and... Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to be, but I think the, I thought it was somewhat of a legitimate lawsuit. Yeah, I know they're a private company, but boy, this is in a gray area, isn't it? Because uh, the Kentucky Derby is almost like a, uh, you know, a, a historical public, a historic race. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I agree with you. I think it's ridiculous. You know, Churchill is being uh, really kind of foolish here. I, again, I, the only one getting hurt here is the fans and the horse because uh, it's not doing anything to help the game by keeping Baffert out, especially since he's, he's you know, he did a, he, whatever he did wrong, he paid the penalty, time to move on. You can't just keep moving the goalpost. Well, I do know one thing that, uh, you know, Churchill Downs might have a good case in saying we're not banning your horses from the Kentucky Derby. So therefore you bought the horses to run in the Kentucky Derby. We're banning the man who's training them. So that could be. Yeah, a, but I, bought, I bought the horses because of the trainer for the most part. I mean, let's be honest. If Baffert wasn't training, he may not even be in the business. This guy, you know, may, I'm sure he probably will be, but he bought them specifically because Baffert knows how to win derbies. And that's why he took the horses and he invested the money in Baffert, even though he bought the horses and obviously he could have transferred them to another trainer. Sure. But that's not that's not what he wants. So, you know, I could tell you this right now. There is a good case and a good argument on both sides. It's going to be kind of uh, interesting to see how they rule on that. That's for sure. But nevertheless, you made, a great point, but you made a great point, though, Ralph. This is going to stretch out to like a week before or two weeks before the Derby. Yeah. We're only like five weeks out to how they're going to fi fix this by then. Well, don't you think that whatever the ruling is, uh, you know, the you have a right to appeal either side, this losing side. And you, you got to think that somebody's, you know, there's going to be appeal working here. But remember one thing that right up until entry time, that's fine. But Bob Baffert, it's not these like these horses are on the shelf. Uh, one, uh, Muth uh, already won, Muth already won the Arkansas Derby. He's fit and ready to go. He'll just keep training for, for another start somewhere, hopefully, uh, they hope, in the Kentucky Derby. And as far as Maim uh, Nunn, uh, he goes on Saturday in the Santa Anita Derby. And uh, after that, if he wins and or loses, uh, he'll be fit and ready to go as well. So it's not like the horses are going to be... Uh, at a, de a disadvantage. As a matter of fact, I would think that Baffert probably would have the screws about as tight as he can get them on these horses so he can prove a point if he gets to go. In any case, we do have two prep races uh, this weekend that we talked about yesterday, but they didn't draw for. They did. They drew for him yesterday, and that, of course, the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct. And, uh, boy, they got a big feel at Aqueduct and the Wood Memorial. Thirteen horses are going to go in this race. We'll give it to you from the rail out real quick. Resilience, uh, Bill Mott and uh, John Velasquez. The two is El Grande O, uh, Dylan Davis for Linda Rice. The three, Lonesome Boy. Uh, uh, Adam Bowman's going to ride there for Hugh uh, Padilla. The four is uh, Deterministic. I would imagine he'll be one of the favorites. Uh, Joel Rosario for Christophe Clement. The five is Protective, uh, Kendrick Carmus for Todd Pletcher. The six, Evening News, Jareth Loveberry for uh, Michael Pino. Uh, you got Merritt in the race, a horse that a lot of people like in this one. Edwin Gonzalez for Safi Joseph Jr. The eight is Elysian Meadows. Jose Lascano for Bill Mott. The nine is Tuscan Sky. A lot of people have been waiting for this horse. Tuscan Sky, Manny Franco riding for Todd Pletcher. The ten is Gettysburg Addressed. Emmanuel Esquivel 
for Dallas Stewart. The 11 is Society Man, Luis Rivera Jr. for Danny Gargan. The 12 uh, is a, a Deposition, uh, Dexter Haddock writing for Uriah St. Louis. And the 13 is Uncle Heavy for Michelle Sanchez writing for Robert E. Reed Jr. So it's, uh, it's a pretty uh, kind of eclectic type of field. It really is. And the interesting horse is going to be deterministic, the Christopher Clementos, because they were talking about just training this horse right into the derby off of two races, which I personally thought was ridiculous. First of all, he's going to get the opportunity to go two turns on Saturday for the first time. I don't think you want to go into the derby without ever being two turns. I mean, that's just, uh, I don't care how great a trainer you are. That's just asking a lot of the horse. So this way, at least in career start number three, and he's done nothing wrong in either one of his first two races. He was extremely impressive last time out making his first start as a three-year-old. It was around one turn, but now we're going to see if he can get the mile and an eighth and see how good he really is. And again, I think Clement uh, did the right thing by running him here on Saturday. Well, the Santa Anita Derby was also uh, uh, drawn yesterday amongst all the other uh, races uh, yesterday uh, for uh, Saturday. 12, horse, uh, 12 race day on, on Saturday at uh, Santa Anita. 12 races and quite a few uh, stakes races as well. But the main event will be the Santa Anita Derby. And uh, there's an eight-pack going in that race. The one horse is Curlin's Chaos, uh, Diego Herrera for Antonio uh, Garcia. The two is uh, Tapalo. Uh, um, Umberto Rispoli for John Sadler. The three is Stronghold. Uh, this, I think, is the horse that won the Sunland Park Derby. Stronghold, Phil D'Amato, gets Antonio Friso to ride back. The four is Imagination, one of the two Bob Baffert trainees in the race. Franco De Tur- Frankie DeTori riding there. Uh, right next door is Winstock, another Bob Baffert trainee, Juan Hernandez riding. The six is Tesuto. Uh, that uh, Cusici Camaro riding for George Papa Padromo. The seven is McVeigh, Hector Barrios for John, Sheri- uh, John Sheriffs. And the eight is EJ won the cup with uh, Mike Smith riding for Doug O'Neill. And you see that in this race, uh, May month didn't go. He's missing. Yeah. <laughs> May month is missing. May month is none, I He's guess, missing. in the race. Uh, well, what uh, is they, that about? They're, uh, they're all talking about wanting to see Maimon run and how it was going to be easy pickings for him, and uh, obviously something's up. Didn't make the didn't make the entry box, but we'll find out more, I guess, from John Lindo a bit a little bit later on. But yet, uh, Baffert's got two horses in the race, and either one of those win, and uh, you got no hundred points for the Derby out of that. Well, they'll get to keep them if they win their their lawsuit, I guess. Like uh, the same thing with Muth last week; he didn't get the points, but uh, if he wins the uh, lawsuit, I guess they're going to have to reassign points. But anyway, imagination, the Baffert horse that is going, or one of the two Baffert horses that are, that's going is certainly the horse to beat here. He's got five starts. It's never been worse than second. He's been around two turns. He's run well at Santa Anita. Everything going for him. He'll be a short price, but, uh, you know, again, Baffert has them over, over a barrel here. Well, uh, we will uh, certainly take a look at that tomorrow. We'll uh, kind of delve into uh, the Ashland, uh, which will be run tomorrow, and the return of uh, just FYI, the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly winner and Eclipse Award winner from last year. She's going to make her three-year-old debut uh, in that tomorrow. And, of course, take a look at those horses. And then, of course, we'll get our finals on the three derby horses on Saturday when they run the three derby prep races. But, uh, I, you know, I... I, I we see the uh, the daily racing form. They have their uh, the their Derby watch list. They've been having it uh, every uh, Friday in the form for quite a few weeks, etc. And there's other publications that have their handicappers uh, give us uh, what they think about the Kentucky Derby ahead. But I wanted to wait until this weekend until we get to the final races for the the big Derby uh, leaderboard points before I asked you guys to do it. And we have, and we've got uh, your top five coming up here. And we will uh, show everybody your top five as we speak today before those three races uh, run. And there they are. Uh, Jonathan, you can explain your top five real quick if you want to. Well, we're going to need some help with just a touch and with resilience. Both of these horses are probably on the outside looking in. Just a touch 
He may make it because of the second in the Gotham, but uh, resilience, the Bill Mott horse is going to need some help. And uh, the rest of them are all going to be in. So, you know, I took three obvious horses that I thought had a shot. And then I took two outsiders that, uh, you know, they're on the bubble looking in. But if they get in, I give them a legitimate chance. All right, my man, and we will keep uh, you will update it each week now uh, through the uh, uh, the week of, uh, of course, drawing for the Kentucky Derby, and then we'll get uh, started with, of course, our seminars and the special show here on the South Point uh, Network, uh, the streaming network at YouTube uh, on Thursday night. We're going to do a special uh, der- derby uh, show that will feature oh, yes. uh, that will feature a lot of the the races that will be happening the next day on Kentucky Oaks Day before we take the stage that night for the Kentucky Derby the following day. But uh, it'll only be be busy. busy. We will be busy, busy, busy. Yes, we will. (laughs) Not to mention the fact, not to mention the fact that it's only on the YouTube feed at the South Point Network YouTube feed. It won't be on any of our other uh, platforms, only on this one uh, for that show. That's for sure. Coming from the uh, South Point. All right. uh, Hey, give me a couple of horses that might, uh, might actually run at a racetrack that won't cancel. (laughs) I can't help it if they can. I know. Anyway, Ralph, first of our two radio play. By the way, that the mandatory payout now was moved to Monday. Monday for people that are looking for it. It's part. That's the next day. Oh, for parks. parks. That's correct. The for parks, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, they have a three hundred and eighty thousand dollar pick five mandatory payout, so that pool will get to two million. Anyway, but that's on Monday. We got a long way till then. Uh Anyway, first of our two radio plays comes in Gulfstream Park today, and we're going to look at the third race. Mile and 70 on Tapita. And I like the number four horse in here. This dude to breeze. So this is a four-year-old gelding from the William Theronis barn. Chris Landeros rides. And this guy does most of his riding really in Kentucky. I have no idea why he's at Gulfstream. But he's in to ride today. The horse is listed at 6-1 to one on the morning line. Ran on turf last time out. Goes back to Tapita today. Number four, this dude's a breeze, wins today's third race out at Gulfstream Park. And I hope he wins in a breeze in the third race, the four, this dude a breeze, the four in the third at Gulfstream, and? Aqueduct, race six, one mile on the main track, a full field of eight. There's a late scratch in there of the four, Triple P, who was 30 to one on the morning line. And I like the number three horse in here, Joey the Fish, a four-year-old filly from the Randy Prasad barn, Sammy Camacho aboard to ride. She's listed at eight to one on the morning line. She moves way up on a wet track. She's one at the distance. She's one on a wet track. The price is right. Number three, Joey the Fish upsets and wins today's sixth race out at Aqueduct. Well, we hope the fish likes swimming in the mud. At least uh, that's the opening conditions for the racetrack today at Aqueduct. But in the sixth race, you like number three, Joey the fish. The three in the sixth race. All right, you got four sheets today, right? Oakland, Gulfstream, Aqueduct, and, of course, San Anita. And you'll be popping in with Keeneland tomorrow, no doubt, right? Yeah, we're dropping Gulfstream. We're going to go to Keeneland. All right. You got it, my man. Thanks a lot, uh, and we will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Hopefully the snow will be thawing out by then. Thank you, Ralph. Stay safe and be well. You got it, my man. All right. Up next will be uh, Rich Ang, uh, which is uh, not worrying about shoveling any snow, at least uh, not uh, here in Las Vegas today. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, especially a Adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org.
South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas for this almost Friday, Thursday race day show. And now we go out to Rich Ang standing by. Richie, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ralphie. Well, I know you're a little bit busier this weekend than maybe other weekends because you are doing two sheets now. You'll be doing a handicapping sheet for Santa Anita, which you have a special Thursday one today. Uh, and, of course, when Keeneland kicks in tomorrow, you'll be doing Keeneland. So you'll be doing two sheets during the Keeneland meet. Between Santa Anita and uh, Keeneland, uh, you'll be doing two handicapping sheets per day for each racing day of those tracks. Of course, Santa Anita will, uh, will have a little bit of a respite after Sunday, but you'll continue with Keeneland, and you'll have the entire Keeneland meet and the rest of Santa Anita, uh, Southern California for sure, on the website, the racedaylasvegas.com website. So just go there and get Richie's stuff. And then, of course, you're uh, doing a last-minute uh, statistical uh, analysis of uh, the Final Four. And uh, and the uh, final game, of course, the championship on Monday. A lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Keeneland's always been one of my favorite tracks. Uh, it goes back to my days at uh, Turfway Park when uh, we were both there, Ralph. Uh, yeah. Used to take a lot of busman's holidays down to Keeneland for the spring and the fall meet. So I've got a lot of knowledge about the racetrack. And it's a, a tremendous meet, uh, high purses, big fields. And as far as the basketball, Ralph, this week, Three championship events going on. We've got yeah. the NCAA tournament for the men and the women, and we've got the NIT finals tonight, which I have an opinion on. Well, you know what? We will take a brief respite on the final four because we've got a couple of more days to talk about and fine-tune those matchups. So why don't you uh, lay out the, the NIT uh, for us tonight? Yeah, the NIT uh, final tonight is uh, going to be at Butler uh, University's Hinkle Fieldhouse, which is a really historic uh, uh, basketball arena that's where they filmed the movie Hoosiers, uh -huh. the state championship game for Hoosiers. And uh, anyway, it's between Indiana State and Seton Hall of the uh, Big East. These were two bubble teams, Ralph, that a lot of people argued should have been in the big dance, the NCAA tournament. But uh, they played with a lot of pride to try to win the NIT, you know, second best. And uh, the crowd's actually going to be about 80, 90 percent Indiana State because the game at Hinkle Fieldhouse is in Indianapolis and Indiana State's just down the road. But believe it or not, I, I like the dog. Uh, Seton Hall's getting plus three. Uh, they come out of the Big East, which I think, in my humble opinion, is the strongest basketball conference in the uh, nation. So uh, I, I like Seton Hall a lot. Uh, they drilled the Georgia team the other night by 20 points. And uh, they're a big physical basketball team. Let's go with Seton Hall Pirates plus three, Ralph. All right, you got it. The Seton Hall Pirates to win the NIT. And at one time, believe it or not, and I know you know this, Sir Richie, the NIT was the big uh, basketball tournament and not the NCAA one, but it uh, took a switch uh, since then, that's for sure. But always always entertaining, that's for sure, the NIT uh, uh, tournament uh, that's, uh, that will be uh, the finals tonight. And, uh, boy, I got to tell you, there's a lot of interest in the uh, women, uh, the NCAA championship women, that's for sure, as well. Yeah, fantastic uh, Final Four. Uh, you got a lot of stars, uh, Caitlin Clark and uh, Paige Buckers with uh, UConn. And on uh, the other side, you've got a 36-0 and 0 so uh, South Carolina team. So a lot of star power, a lot of really great teams left in the Final Four. And as far as sports is concerned, man, you had Jersey and New York go at it on the ice last night. I mean, it took one second in the hockey game before they emptied the benches and everybody was fighting. Not one fight or yeah, two yeah. fights. Everybody, all, all the starters were fighting each other on the ice. Yeah, you know, when that happens, obviously it, it feels like it's pre-staged. And, uh, you know, when I watched the, uh, the, the highlights and the reviewed it, you can see the players talking to each other. It's almost like you want to go and – 
and the, all five players on the <laughs> ice ended up dropping their gloves and going at it. And a lot of them got kicked out of the game yeah. because, uh, you know, because third man in or something like that or ancillary fighting. Yeah. So uh, both teams were shorthanded the entire game. Yeah, but I don't, I've never seen, uh, you know, all the starters on the ice fight each other. I mean, you know, you've seen, you've seen fights all the time in, in hockey, but it's usually two guys doing at it, and everybody else is trying to either separate them or jump in on it. But uh, that was kind of uh, unusual for sure. All right, <laughs> yes. uh, Rich, uh, time to get a pick now uh, for San Anita. Let's go to race number eight, six and a half furlongs at San Anita. It's a first level uh, optional claiming race. Let's go with the horse coming back off a long layoff. Number four, Delightful Heart. This horse showed a lot of promise uh, for Mike Pipey. Uh, he's as good as anybody getting him ready off the bench. Two to one's the price, but uh, I really like the four. Delightful Heart in the eighth. Eighth race today, number four, Delightful Heart. Uh, that's uh, Richie's playoff of his sheet that you can get at the racedaylasvegas.com website. Now, Richie, I know that you're one of our handicappers on the show. And so uh, all of our handicappers, we asked uh, to start giving us uh, their top five uh, contenders that they believe will be in the Kentucky Derby. And uh, you did that as well for us. And uh, we'll put up that your, your graphic right there. And uh, you can uh, kind of explain uh, your top five. Well, you know, I've got a lot of logical horses there, but the, the horse that is of most interest to me because I have a future book bet in my pocket mm -hmm. on the Japanese horse, Forever Young at 100 to 1. I bet him before uh, Dubai and before uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. So uh, I read, you know, his, his reputation coming out of Japan. So uh, I got the maximum price, but uh, he's coming. He's coming to Kentucky, and uh, I hope he moves from number five to number one at some point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, we'll uh, you guys get to update it every week until we get to the uh, draw for the Kentucky Derby, that's for sure. Hey, thanks a lot, Rich. Uh, so go back to work for us, and we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All righty. Coming up next, John Lindo. The big question to John now is not the weather so much as what happened to Maimon. We'll find out. Don't go away. From the South Point Studio. Perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh. 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 Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oh, Rio. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> 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 I look at the clock. I go. Ah! Ah! Oh. Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas for this almost Friday, Thursday. We're going to wrap up the show here with John Lindo and, of course, Jerry Jackwitz. John, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How you doing? Well, uh, my, my first question was going to be, how is the weather? But not anymore. What happened to May month? Nothing officially. The uh, the word from Bob Baffert yesterday when he did not enter May month, he just decided that he didn't think that horse was ready for a mile and an eighth. So that's what we're going to go with for now. Uh, we'll see if he shows up on the work tab over the weekend. Uh, you know, otherwise, you, you, you know, sometimes when you, when you feel like there's smoke, there might be fire. But uh, he's been training well all, all along coming into this, and he just did not show up in the entries. And, you know, you got to think to yourself uh, with the lawsuit now happening and the, if they catch lightning in the bottle and actually uh, accept uh, Baffert's horses for the Kentucky Derby, Maimon may, uh, won't have enough points. Well, that's true. Yeah, you know, the only thing he would be able to do probably would go to the Lexington Stakes. But yeah. uh, I don't think that he really is, a, a, right now, at least a mile and a quarter horse yeah. if he can't get the mile and eighth 
on the first Saturday in April. Yeah, that's for sure. Muth is going to be uh, their ace if they get a, get to go for sure. All right, we're coming up to Sunday, closing day uh, for the long winter uh, spring meet at San Anita. Take a little respite and then start the uh, the meet that uh, used to be Hollywood Parks. But uh, real quick, jockey trainer standings. Well, uh, Juan Hernandez will be the leading jockey. He's got 50, 50 wins going into this weekend. Then you've got Flavian Pratt in second with 42. He's now based at uh, Keeneland. And Antonio Frizu rounds out the top three. He's got 40 winners. Doug O'Neill's had a good meet. He's got 29 uh, wins going into the weekend. Mark Glatt has 25. Then you have Bob Baffert with 23 and Phil D'Amato with 22. So pretty bunched up there as far as the trainers go. Favorites never got to where they usually are, though, huh? No, they settled in in the high 40s and stayed there. It's 46% for the meet with four days of racing left in the, in the winter meet. Well, it's going to be an exciting day of racing Saturday with 12 races there and a lot that going on, uh, that's for sure, with that, that, that pick three, uh, you know, connecting all three of the, uh, the races for Kentucky Derby points. And I know that uh, you had a leaderboard that you gave us uh, that I asked all our handicappers to do. And uh, your leaderboard, of course, uh, uh, we'll get it up on the screen in a minute, and then you can show us uh, what you had as far as your leaders uh, in the first week that we asked you to do this. Well, as far as uh, the, the Derby leaderboard, I tried to use horses that have the points to get in that we know are, you know, are, are getting there. I thought Sierra Leone took a step forward, winning the Risen Star in his three-year-old debut. We'll see him Saturday in the Bluegrass, a rematch with Dornock, who was, uh, you know, who got nailed by Sierra Leone in the Remsen at, at Aqueduct last winter. So mm -hmm. uh, they're obviously right there. A fierceness off of that win last week. You know what he's capable of. You just don't know when he's going to show it. Um, like John Hardoon, I think Honor Marie's kind of under the radar. This source is getting better, and he's got proven form at Churchill Downs, which is a big thing. And deterministic, I'm glad they're running him in the wood on Saturday. He's never been two turns. Mm -hmm. I think he'll get it. He trains like he'll get it. Uh, but we need to see it. So that's an important race for deterministic on Saturday. Now, John, of course, we have a big day of racing coming up Saturday. We've got the uh, big three pick three that will uh, link up all those uh, derby prep races together. Kind of a unique, uh, kind of fun bet, I, I know for sure. The coast-to-coast -coast pick five, et cetera. Mandatory payouts on Sunday, no matter what's left in the pools. And uh, you, your uh, John Lindo uh, sheet, uh, Lin the Lindo report for, let, let's uh, just say for the next couple of weeks, what are you doing there? Well, obviously, we'll continue daily with the Santa Anita, but they are dark next week. Yeah. Starting tomorrow, I will do a Keeneland sheet daily as well. So Santa Anita and Keeneland, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And next week, Wednesday through Sunday, will be all Keeneland. All right, you got it. And Keeneland's gonna, it's going to be a fun meet, too. I, I know that for sure. And uh, I, I'm i not even going to ask you about the uh, latest lawsuit uh, for, uh, you know, uh, Baffert's horses and the uh, – and the Kentucky Derby. We'll let the courts handle that, that's for sure. Good. Well, there's a hearing on that on Monday, so we'll have more news about that next week. No kidding. No, no doubt about that. All right, look, we've got like, – this is like a Saturday card at uh, San Anita today. It's because we canceled the Saturday yeah, card I last know. weekend. So <laughs> they brought it here. So and we actually benefit. The field sizes are good today, tomorrow, and Saturday's entries are out, so the field sizes are good there too. So it's nice to see some big fields at San Anita. All right, John. Well, uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's go right to the opener. First uh, post time, 1 o'clock today at Santa Anita. In the first race, number four, Paradise Lake got into all kinds of traffic problems. But when he got, when she got clear, she really finished up well in her debut. Uh, Peter Erden, the trainer, is much better with second-time starters than first-time starters. A little longer distance, six and a half furlongs today. I think she moves forward and gets the money here. Three to one on the program. Number four, Paradise Lake, race number one, Santa Anita. All right, first race post time today at San Anita is at 1 o'clock. And, of course, we got nine races, a couple of nice grade threes on the card. So in the first race, to start out the early pick five, number four, Paradise Lake. The four, Paradise Lake, John Lendo's pick in the opener today at San Anita. Don't forget, John Lendo's Lendo Report is here at the South Point. Every Southern California racing day, every Keeneland racing day now for the, the uh, Keeneland meet, et cetera. And, of, of course, suggested other big days as well. Whenever the Linda Report is out, it's here and it's free of charge right here at the South Point Racebook. Complimentary, the Linda Report. And, of course, it's the only place in Las Vegas you can get that Linda Report. And it's here because they love horse players and, of course, they love uh, John Lindo's Linda Report as well. Uh, John, uh, tomorrow, uh, real quick, we've got the Ashland Stakes coming up with the uh, three-year-old Phillies. Just FYI, making her three-year-old debut. And so we'll talk more about that tomorrow as well. 
But uh, la- uh, Ralph, I will not be on the show Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've got some family uh, events yeah. going on this weekend, and I'm traveling. So that is right, exactly. I will have uh, exactly right. Uh, pardon me. You are uh, there's a family obligation you have to go to today, but uh, uh, over the weekend you won't be with us. But we'll get selections and Lindo reports, right? Absolutely, yes. All right. You have a good time. Be safe, my man, and we'll talk to you next week. You got it, Ralph. Good luck today. All right. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jackowitz standing by. And Jerry, of course, one of our handicappers. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Ralph. Well, I asked all our handicappers to give us their their top five as they see it right now for the Kentucky Derby, kind of your top contenders. And you gave us a list as well. And we'll post that list. And you can explain a little bit about uh, what you got on that list. We're going to do that right now? Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Okay, so... uh... I've got three <laughs> because uh, Timber Timberlake was scratched, so yes. he doesn't count. Yes, <laughs> you would have four. Got, you would have four. I've got fierceness, Sierra Leone, and Doorknock, um, and I have them pretty close. With fierceness really being the the uh, best of the group right now. Who's when I say the best? He's run the fastest races of anybody to date in my opinion, and uh, that opinion is based on speed figures that I generate for my own self uh-huh. and uh, forecast off of him. I mean, his last race in the um, in the uh, Florida Derby looked like a real easy win. He looked really nice, and he looks like he's now in what I would call forward-going form. I would expect him to run even better next time out. Um, Sierra Leone runs every time. He's really for the, at this point, finally on equal experience level with everybody. Uh-huh. Um, and just a, a terrific horse and great closer. You know, what we don't know is how they're going to run from the mile and an eighth pole to the finish line. Yeah. And every, you know, going a mile and a quarter is its own special thing. And then door knock. I mean, if you go back to the Remsen, you saw door knock and Sierra Leone literally on even terms. Sierra Leone ran a little bit bigger number, a little harder race, but Doorknock showed a certain amount of competitiveness that is worth its weight in gold sometimes. So these are three really good horses that I have and um, believe in, and um, I'll, I'll try and give you two more next week. Okay, yeah, because we're going <laughs> to so, update them. We're going to update them each week until they draw for the Kentucky Derby a couple of weeks. Uh, I guess we got about four more weeks to that. But in any case, uh, Jerry, two of the horses that you have there we're going to be knocking heads again uh, this yeah. this weekend, so we'll wait and see about that. And of course, your uh, your Jerry J's power pages will cover Aqueduct and the Wood Memorial, and of course the Santa Anita Derby at Santa Anita because, because you do the power pages for both Santa Anita and Aqueduct uh, for us right now. And so uh, we'll go and get some picks today. Yeah, let's go over to uh, race number three at Aqueduct. Number one, Narciso Dolly. Uh, Jumps off the page at me for Chris Engelhardt. Uh, last out was really not a bad race. Um, it was stuck a little wide and had a little trouble getting into the race. And uh, that might actually set him up. It looks like um, like he's being set up for another forward move today. And uh, uh, I really like him a lot. What's interesting about the race is that I kind of make everybody else about equal. So here's how I'm going to make him. I'm going to start with a, a good win or win place bet on the one. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have a spread where I use everybody in the race, but I'm also going to put a little extra money on the one, two, two, one. So. All right. So you're doing a one all as a basic bet with link ups and then you're coming back with a one, two, two, one, right? That is correct. Ralph. All right. So the one Narcisco Dolly is the key horse in the third race, the one with uh, anybody else you like folks. Uh, the simple as put the third race, the one horse at Aqueduct. And now we go to uh, Santa Anita. Right. Here we're going to go to the sixth race. Uh, Rosemary Trell has claimed Irish Wahini, the sixth horse, in race number six. And uh, I always liked her off a claim. I think she improves horses. Um, and this horse doesn't really look like it's going up in class. I know it does maybe at first glance going from a $10,000 claim or up into a 20000 state bred optional. But uh, um, it's probably a pretty much a lateral move. And uh, Irish Wahini looks like she's just really coming into fantastic form. So I just like the way the horse looks an awful lot. Five to two would be okay. Um, I hope we get it. Uh, I'm going to take the six over the three, four, five, small reverses to break even, but the six Irish Wahini in race number six. That's my pop out key and feature play 
if we can get five to two. All right. You got the six and the sixth race. That's easy to remember. The link ups are three, four, five, and reverse. Two dollar ROI on the six in the sixth race at Santa Anita. Power pages for Santa Anita and Aqueduct available right now at jerryjspowerpage.com. And we've uh, finished off our Thursday show. When we come back, it will really, really, really be Friday. So in the meantime, uh, enjoy the day. And uh, Jerry's got one more thing to say. He's going to say it. Have a great race day, everybody. <laughs>